Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. I know y'all can understand this South Georgia accent, right? So, my good pleasure to be here. My good pleasure to have my wife and Lauren and Easton. If anybody watches Corn Warriors, there's the star right there. Hey, buddy. Hey, Easton. Hey, Easton. <laughs> but they were able to come with me. And it's uh, my good pleasure to have them. They don't get to go much with me, but they did come, so that's good. Uh, anybody here this morning hear me when I spoke first thing? A little bit of a recap for our season. Um, 2017-18 was very wet for us, as you well know. Uh, you heard me say about it at the other meetings we've been at. 2019, um, it did not come in threes, okay? We were wet early, and then we got extremely dry. Um, we planted four, 400 acres of dry land corn, which is not norm, the norm for us. And by the time it got to V12, V13, the rain stopped, 100 degree weather. When you guys were cold, wet, couldn't get corn planted, we were burning up. And I had 400 acres die. And I had some intercropping in that mix with the uh, corn and had corn and beans. It's really dry when soybeans die. Do you agree? Dead. We will not harvest one dry land bushel on corn this year. Not one. So careful what you ask for, right? Um, we'd have liked to still had some rain, but we just did not get any in the fall, in the, in the mid pollination for us, or really at any time for five weeks. 100 degree weather. Uh, we've started harvest. Uh, started uh, Saturday and Sunday of last week, and I was in North Florida. Corn is pretty good. Uh, first time I've grown corn in Florida ever. Anybody ever been to the beaches of Florida? Pretty sandy ground? We farm some of that same garbage, so um, it's beet sand, sugar sand. Um, we had irrigation, and when we've had irrigation, we're making from 250 to 350. So pretty good corn. Uh, it's worth harvest. So, um, we move into Georgia, and before I came, my goal was to harvest a little bit of the intercropping corn. Uh, we've been playing around with intercropping this year, and the intercropping is planting corn and beans on a 40-foot corn, 30-foot bean rotation, planting it all at the same time. I know y'all have seen or heard of it probably in Iowa. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of that, trying to help our next level guys figure out the highest way and the easiest way to profitability, a great ROI, and we're playing around with it, and I am excited. Uh, we saw the yield monitor going from 320 to 450 before we left. Now, we hadn't harvested that many acres of it, but I had to at least see so I could talk about it, okay? Um, very good corn. Managing it for 300 bushel corn and seeing that kind of yield from it, that's, that's exciting. That's where ROI is. That is free bushels. Anybody got any ideas how we make that free, make those free bushels? Where's it coming from? Sunlight. So why isn't everybody on the planet doing it? In our case, the wind burns up the interest, it's the opposite. That wind blows up the, burns up the interest. What about the rest of the people? If you listen to some guys, they say we shouldn't be planting in rows to begin with, right? Could we fix the corn market if all of us didn't plant in rows? Could we fix it in one year? But getting farmers to agree on something is pretty tough. You agree? You would agree not to plant yours, and when he wasn't looking, he'd plant them for you, and plus it, right? I get it. So it's pretty difficult. So... Managing that sunlight has been a big deal for us. Uh, we've got some guys that did it in Nebraska last year with Next Level. This year we've got nine camps with Next Level. They're spread out. Uh, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, um, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Illinois. I mean, we're covering a lot of states. And we've got probably 25 states that are represented in those states. Um, of growers, over 500 growers now. And 
there's a lot of guys doing this intercropping deal and are urging. And I can tell you there's a lot of free bushels there. A lot of free bushels. It's the closest thing to a silver bullet that I know. But most guys say, I'm not going to do that. If it takes me having to do that to grow corn, then I'm not going to do that. So Jesus could tell some of you what to do and you still wouldn't do it, right? That's just the way it goes. But it is something that you, you might want to consider. So I want to open it up to questions. That's a little bit of a preview of our season, a little bit of a review of what we've done that's different for 19 and I want to open it up for questions. I think we're doing three one hour or so sessions, 50 minute or so sessions, I think. Yes. So we got three different sessions. If we don't get to your question, obviously we'll try to get it the next session if you still